That's fantastic. So basically, you're really describing why this is so much better than what our real standard of care is. And this is for diagnosis. Now, are you able to use this kind of modality for someone who's diagnosed with prostate cancer? And is there something that you can do that's better than what we have available now with that as well? Sure, absolutely. I'll, I'll just to go back for one other additional uh, piece of information. The just sure. a lot of patients don't know when they go in for an ultrasound guided biopsy, the urologist has to has to stick a needle into the prostate gland 12 to 16 times. Those are a lot of sticks, yep. and it's more painful. There's a more of a risk for infection and other complications. With an MRI, when I do a biopsy, it's only two to three sticks because I see exactly where wow. I'm going, which is a nice advantage and much safer and more comfortable for the patient. But uh, getting on to what you said in terms of treatment, so now a lot, the two main treatments that have been available up till now for prostate cancer have been radical prostatectomy, where you surgically cut out the entire prostate gland, and uh, radiation therapy. The problem with prostatectomy, when you take out the whole gland, is there are nerves that run into the prostate gland that are involved in uh, maintaining erection function, erectile function, as well as continence in, in terms of urination and the sphincter of the bladder and maintaining control of urination. So there are a lot of nerves and vessels that are severed a lot of times when the prostate gland is taken out, and those there's a very high number of patients who suffer permanent erectile dysfunction after uh, having their prostate surgically removed. And in addition, mm -hmm. these procedures usually take a couple of hours, and there are complications because it is a major surgery. Even the robot that they've used, the uh, Da Vinci robot, has a lot of complications as well. The other treatment is radiation, where you, have, you, you go into a CAT scanner, and they look at your prostate gland, and they, they shoot a radiation beam at your gland and try to destroy the prostate tumor. Um, the problem with that is it is radiation, and there's always an association with organs near the prostate gland that you can create right. new cancers in. With my treatment, I, uh, I'm able to exactly see where the tumor is, and in patients with what we call a Gleason 7 and below or a lower-grade prostate tumor that's only in one part of the prostate gland, these guys don't need that aggressive treatment. They don't want, you know, why put unnecessary risk and you know, maybe have erectile dysfunction for the rest of their lives if it's such a low-grade tumor? So what we do right. is we bring the patient into the MRI scanner, and we focus a laser beam exactly the same way we do an MRI biopsy. We put it that where exactly where the tumor is, and we just burn that tumor tissue. Wow. This, this is really a, a cutting-edge, very new technology, and it's very safe. The nice thing is this is very safe. I can see exactly where I'm destroying tissue. I know I'm not going to hit any of those nerves or blood vessels that could cause impotence or incontinence. And, you know, it really, you're, you're, it's a very conservative treatment and very safe. Also, the technology also allows me to protect very, very critical structures near the prostate gland, such as the urethra, the bladder, or rectum, which in other types of uh, treatments for prostate cancer could be severely damaged. So I have a special computer software that helps protect those areas. And if the heating should ever go beyond a certain level, the equipment shuts off automatically. There are a lot of safety mechanisms in place for this procedure, which are very nice. That's awesome. And just so the patients kind of understand this, when you're talking about a laser, a focused laser, what it does is it goes through the tissue and it very safely goes through the tissue until a certain depth. And the MRI lets you know exactly what depth to have that laser actually burn the tissue at, right? So they're not going to have burns on the outside or anything like that. It's just going to be the exact tissue that you want to be burned. Is that right? Exactly. It's going to be it's, it's a three-dimensional image, which is the beauty of MRI. So I, I see in multiple planes, I can see exactly the depth of where I'm going. And I, I always see exactly where everything is placed on a TV screen or on a monitor. So this is, this is the whole procedure is live and you're, you're seeing exactly where you're going as opposed to a lot of other procedures where in some ways you're kind of sticking the needle and you have to kind of guess how far you're in. I'm always visualizing and seeing where I'm going, which is, is very nice. It makes the procedure a lot safer. That's wonderful. For the, the uh, listeners, I'm just kind of reiterating what you're saying because you made so many wonderful points. The, the one treatment, the radical prostatectomy, it actually cuts the prostate out and you can damage the nerves that can lead to loss of ability to have erections or incontinence. With the radiation, unlike this focused laser that doesn't damage anything until it gets to the tissue, the radiation can damage, it's not quite as fine, so it can damage other tissues like the, the urethra, the bladder, the bowel. You can have other problems because of the radiation. And this particular treatment doesn't do that. And so I just, I think that's wonderful. That's fantastic. You know, another thing that I should mention is cost, first of all, too. A lot of these other procedures, the cost for radiation could be over $60,000. And cost for, you know, the radical prostatectomy, if you consider all the other comorbidities associated with the other problems, they're very, it could be very expensive. And 
obviously very tra traumatic for the patient. So this kind of uh, type of procedure, there's no anesthesia needed. It's done in under an hour. And the patient leaves, and yeah. leaves about a half an hour after the procedure, and they're, they're very comfortable. I mean, I've seen great results, um, which is very promising. So, you know, men, a lot of men will be very averse or afraid to go for workup or even look for elevated PSA, but now we have a really a nice option to tell them, hey, listen, that's not the end of the world. You have an elevated PSA or you, ha you end up with a low-grade prostate tumor. There is really some, not, there's a very nice option now that's available for them to treat this. So now we have a better way to really biopsy and know what's happening. And then once you biopsy, if you do find a prostate cancer, you're really able to essentially treat it in about a half an hour to an hour with no anesthesia. That's, that's essentially what you're saying, right? Yes, absolutely. That is fantastic. I, I love it. Now, how did they develop this? You know, how, how have you been able to be, to tr be trained and know about this and to perform it? Well, you know, this is very new technology. The, the actual the MRI has been around, obviously, for a very long time, but the actual software that we use to process the images and allow us to see this new information, such as increased blood vessel formation and tumor tissues, to look for a slow flow of, of water molecules and tumor tissue, that's very new. And, you know, we're talking about a year in, in development. So, and I've, you know, I have a very strong number of urologists, a large number of urologists that have sent me cases. So, Really, they're very excited about this new cutting-edge technology and, and what it can offer them because a lot of them don't want to use the aggressive treatments that have been available up, only available up until now to treat prostate cancer. They have a lot of patients with low-grade tumors, and this really gives them a wonderful option to say, hey, listen, you know, a lot, instead of maybe even just watching this, some of them do, do choose to do that. That's called watchful waiting. They'll watch low-grade tumors. Now we can actually treat these tumors and, and follow the patients very carefully, and, and we see wonderful results and not have to go through the whole radical prostatectomy or radiation with all those complications that may be associated with that. As well, there's another treatment that's used. It's called high-intensity focused ultrasound or HIFU, which is not FDA approved. And a lot of patients actually spend a large amount of money and they travel overseas to Bermuda or to the Bahamas and have U.S. Physicians, U.S. urologists do these procedures. The problem with that is that, you know, it is not FDA approved and the regulation is, is not as, you know, is limited. My procedure is FDA cleared, and, and, and you can do it, of course, in the United States, which the accessibility, it's much more accessible, of course, than a treatment like that. That is wonderful. Once these patients are treated, and you know, obviously you're going to follow them very closely with PSA, are there things that you can recommend to the listeners to reduce their risk of prostate cancer, things that they should be doing to really to try and limit that risk? It has been a lot of research into what the etiology or cause of prostate cancer is, it has been linked to certain viruses, you know, the different vitamin supplements you take, such as lycopene, that can help prevent it. But, you know, it's still in terms of lifestyle and, and just staying healthy, you know, it just would be the type of approach any other patient would use for, to prevent any, any type of cancer. But in terms of anything specific, I think the best thing you can do is just have your, you know, get periodic checks, just like with the, you know, everybody's accepted getting a colonoscopy at a certain age. And this is the same thing. If you get a PSA check and, and you pick it up early enough, and you, if you could pick these up at the earliest stage, they're extremely treatable. And the patient can, go, can now go on and have a normal life. Very, very cool. And w at what age would you recommend that, that men start having their PSA checked? Above the age of 40, I would recommend. Okay. So start checking at the age of 40, which is great. And then, obviously, if they're, if they're normal, then, then that's great. We'll just keep following them. And then if they have any issues, they can, they can visit your lovely neck of the woods. Now, where else is this um, procedure being offered? Well, right now, I've, I've done the most of this in the, uh, the United States and actually probably the world. In terms of the, I'm actually developing a program with multiple centers throughout the East Coast. I have uh, a contact now in California as well who's, who has tried to start working on this, but in terms of the laser ablation portion, I'm the only one doing it in this method via the, it's called the transrectal approach. Other hospitals have tried to do it doing something called the transperineal approach, which is, is a surgery. And a lot, obviously, there are a lot more, there's a lot more risk that's associated with that. But in terms of the approach I'm using via the rectum, which doesn't need anesthesia, right now I'm the only one really doing it this way. So. But I'm hoping to train in the near future to train more people and, and hopefully get make this procedure a lot more available to many patients throughout the United States. If there will, but anybody is welcome for any part of the country to call me at any time, and uh, you know we can give them links to my website, and uh, I'd be happy to discuss their case with them because I do have people flying from all over to have this done now. And I was just gonna—that was my very next statement: is how can my listeners get a hold of you? Okay, so they can they can go to my website. It's uh, SperlingLaserAssociates.com. 
or uh, my name, dansperling.com, and all the contact information is in there. Beautiful. I will make sure that I have that listed on the uh, on the information regarding the show so that we can get you situated because I think that it's a fantastic procedure. And one of these things where I hate seeing the morbidity with a lot of the other issues and morbidity for the listeners is just the things like with the radical prostatectomy, the, the incontinence and the, the long-term erectile dysfunction. And it's so great to know that the low-grade tumors have this kind of an option, and they don't have to do the watch and wait or have the higher-level higher, higher level procedure, so that's wonderful. And I really want to get the word out there because I think this is a wonderful new treatment that really will help millions of people, and we, we just really need to make patients aware. So I'm glad. That, I'm really thankful for that you gave me the opportunity to do that on your show. Well, I'm so thankful to have you on, and like I said, I love the fact that there is this option. So I will definitely have you uh, back on for updates, and we'll make sure we get the word out for you, all right? Okay, great. You take care. Bye-bye. I want to thank Dr. Sperling for an amazing interview, great information, and remind you that you can reach him on his website, dansperling.com. So it's D-A-N-S-P-E-R-L-I-N-G.com. I want to thank you for joining me this week. We had three great interviews. Remember, visit my website, DrAliciaStanton.com, for more information and to sign up for my newsletter. And remember that what you do today matters tomorrow. We'll see you next week. Take care.